Hi everyone, welcome to my video where I will show you how to make a bag from scratch. You can see here that I already linked my folder called bag where I will find all my assets that I will use during this video. I'm just drag and dropping my DXF base and I can see here that I'm missing some part that needs to be doubled. I'm using the Ctrl D to double those parts and have this link editing. I then start my arrangement with my Gizmo in my 3D window. So I'm taking the bottom of the shell and I'm placing it as close as possible to the, to the grid. I then pick those shell parts that I will place as close as possible to this uh, bottom part because as I don't have an avatar, I will just go step by step and start from this bottom that I will freeze so it will stay in place and everything will be built on top of that. When the shell is done, I'm just taking the handle and placing them as close as possible to my shell where it should land when it's going to be sewn to the shell. I will then freeze the zipper as well as the handle and the bottom parts as well as the lining because I will start the simulation on only the shell. So right now I'm sewing the shell together before the simulation. I'm using the segment sewing tool and the free sewing tool. <clears throat> when this is done, I can strengthen my pattern pieces. So I'm taking those pattern pieces, I still have the bottom frozen and I can start the simulation. So here you can see the shell falling into place. I will then unfreeze my handle because I will want to start the sewing on this part and I will then simulate it. So I'm using here the free sewing tool. I'm sewing the bottom of my handle to the shell on those internal lines. When this is done, you can see those uh, colorful lines that are your sewing lines. I'm freezing the shell and I'm starting the simulation with the handles. So as soon as they are in place, I can then unfreeze the shell. I'm activating it and I will just change the particle distance of the handle and put it to 10 because I want the handle to be a bit more defined. Following that, I will start my lining. So same process, I just picked the, the bottom that I will freeze later on and I'm taking those lining pieces that I will put as close as possible to the bottom. So I'm arranging them, the white part facing outward. So the white part is your right side. I'm freezing the bottom and then I'm starting the sewing with free sewing or segment sewing, whatever is more convenient for you. When this is done, I'm just strengthening it and start the simulation. So here info, it falls into place I'm trying to uh, put the parts, the top parts, cl as close as possible to each other. So here I was pinning a bit and then I stopped the simulation and I'm just grabbing those three pieces of pattern that I drag inside in the 3D window inside my shell. So the goal here is to have those, this lining completely inside the shell. So if some parts are poking out, like you can see here, you can just shrink a bit your pattern pieces in your property editor. Here what I did is I deactivated the, the shell because I wanted to simulate the lining without the sh shell being uh, interfered with. When the lining is nicely simulated, I activate the shell again and then I start the sewing. So here I will sew my lining to my shell and you have to, to put your sewing line to turn. When this is done, you can then simulate and all parts fall into places. I will then remove the strengthening and I will change uh, the shrinkage. I will put the shrinkage at 100 because remember I shrinked the lining a bit and then I unfreeze my bottom. And here you can see my lining is fitting perfectly in my shell. I will then start to create a pocket. So I will use an internal shape. So here a square and I will just right click on it and then clone as pattern. So the pattern piece I will put on the side and then I will be able to sew this pattern piece to this internal shape. You can see here that on the other side, I can see my internal shape. So I will just remove the link editing on the pattern piece. So I will not get this internal line also on the other side. Then in 3D, I will just right click superimpose over this pocket 
and then simulate. So here you can see my pocket is there and sewn to my lining. I will then concentrate on the zipper. I will unfreeze the zipper and I will just sew it to my shell. Here I will then sew the side as well. And I will just change the sewing line type on my on the seam that is on the side of the zipper. And I will change the fold angle to 120 because you want the zipper to kind of lay at an angle of 45 degrees compared to the shell. And then I right click on it in 3D and I just superimpose side. And I can start the simulation and here everything falls into place. I will just pick my handle and move them a bit apart because I will then uh, use this an internal line to kind of fold it onto itself. I use the trace tool to create an internal line and then I will change the fold angle to zero, which means the wrong sides are going to touch each other. So here you can see my handle folding onto itself and I will then uh, pin them up because I want them to stay up like this. And I will then just apply uh, some fabric onto my bag. Here I created some lever that I just drag and drop and I just unstrengthen everything because here it will get the right physical properties through this fabric. And for the zipper, I have a specific uh, texture on it. So I will just grab the edit texture and just move slightly the texture. So the, um, the teeth of the zipper are fitting together. I then simulate and the bag takes the right shape. I'm then just changing slightly uh, the thickness of my parent piece. So here, because it's a lever, I like to add like a thickness of three millimeter or two millimeter. I mean, it's up to you. And then you can just remove the fold rendering onto this internal line where there's the handle. And I will just select the button tool to create some studs. So here I just open my button that I create. I create some parameters that I just opened here. And I just duplicate this button on the different part of the handle where the stud is supposed to be. And of course, you can always change the shape of this button through the object browser and you can change also the fabric that is on it. I will then just change the particle distance slightly of my bag so it kind of drapes a bit better. And here we are just missing some trims. So here I will just put uh, some puller for the zipper and I'm going to the hardware and trim folder, the default one, and I'm just going to browse for an OBJ that is nice. Here I load it as a trim and I can use the glue bottle to put it onto my parent piece that is my zipper. And I use the gizmo to fine tune the placement of this trim. I will then change the fabric uh, that is on it and I will put like a metal. Then I get a puller. So here I pick a shape that I like and I load as a trim. I again use the glue bottle to put it on and then I place it with the gizmo. Again, I change it for a metal. When this is done, um, I'm going to put some top stitching so you can put top stitch wherever you want. Here I already created a preset and I'm just here placing them. When the placement is done, I will just go to my object browser and just load a, a top stitch that I already created. Then I can go to render and start the preview of my render. You can of course uh, tweak all the parameters, but you can see that in some of our other videos. Here I already have a preset, so I'm quite happy with the result and I will just render. So here is the, an example of how the render would look like. So thank you for watching and like and subscribe.